Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. We're here today for this week's autopsy where we're doing a water meter. This is the follow-up autopsy to last week where we did an electric meter. So this is the standard water meter that you're going to find in, well, I don't know, it changes all over the United States. But this is what you find around Grand Rapids and Western Michigan. This is pretty generic for around here. And it hooks in line like your water comes in from the city. And this is a standard residential service. This is only a 5 8 inch water meter. Um, here at the lab, we have a lot bigger. I think we have a 2 inch water main here at the lab. But for a house you don't have as big, comes in here, it goes through the meter. The meter measures how many cubic meters of water you're using. And then it goes out here into the beginning of the plumbing of your house. If you look down at the top, you can see the numbers for cubic meters. And this little black thing is pretty much a, hey, there's water moving indicator. This turns around as the water moves. And then there's a little counter over here that measures what I'm guessing is a fraction of a meter. So, or a fraction of a cubic meter. So we're going to start by taking it apart. And get a look inside here and see how this works. It looks like the body is made out of bronze. And here's some of the schmutz inside it. I'll take these off because they don't do anything for us right now and they're just really heavy. I don't know if this is made out of bronze or copper. Could be either. A lot of plumbing's made out of copper, but a lot of times you'll see valves and stuff made out of bronze. Batman, being the horrible person he is, has stolen all of my sockets. So I get to take these apart with this little toy wrench. Oh, and there's, there's fun inside. A fair bit of rust and nastiness. See if I can get that last one out. There we go. That so bad. So here, we'll start digging in through the bottom because there's four big bolts down there. And then under the cover, we find a diaphragm. Maintains its watertight seal. Under the diaphragm, and now we can see there's a, there's a rust in here. Then we've got an O ring. That looks like an inlet screen to protect it from gunge. Grab pop that out. So that's our input screen. Every bit of water in this person's house flowed through this. And then they drank it. That's a nice thought, isn't it? Let's see if this will drop right out the bottom. It might. I might get lucky. Come on out. There you go. Okay. So we've got this whole assembly. Now this, I think, and we're going to find out, but I think this is an impeller of some manner. Let's dig into this and figure it out. But this is what I think it happens. I think water comes in around it, goes through the impeller here. 
through this system and then comes out this hole and this turns a magnet. I think that's a magnet right there. We're going to check and be sure, but I think that's a magnet. And I think that's the entirety of the wet assembly. I think that this, there's a piece right here that isolates and uses a magnet to couple through, but this isolates all the wet side of things. And then up here is the dry side of things. And I'm going to have to figure out how to get this off to show you that. And I don't think it's going to come off without breaking it because it's probably designed to not come off without breaking it. Yeah, that's a magnet. It's not a strong enough magnet to hold that screwdriver, but it might hold that screwdriver. So that's, that's a magnet. So if I stand the screwdriver up, you can see, boop, that's a magnet. Okay. Let's take a look inside. Will this separate? Yes, yes, cool. Okay, so inside we have this chamber and the water in order to get out of here has to flow. Oh, it's like a rotary vein pump. Okay, cool. So this moves like that. You can't really see it very well. I'll try and get you on a close up here. Okay, this moves like a rotary vein pump. This whole piece moves around in this path. It's really hard to make it do it like this, but it moves around like a rotary vein compressor, kind of. Kind of. Not really, but kind of. And then this is the seal from one side to the other. So it makes this whole thing move around. Here, let me see if I can make this a little easier. Let me give you a good idea of how this works. I'll try and put this together a little bit. I took the buffer wheel out of the bottom so it doesn't bind up as easily. Okay, now look in here. You can see this moves and it follows that path. Okay, like a little engine. And certain types of engines actually work on a similar principle to this. Um, if you look up a Wankel engine, which are commonly used in uh, certain Mazdas, it's a, a type of rotary engine, they move like this. So that's changing the displacement of that area as it moves around. And since you know very accurately how big this area is by just knowing the math on this, and there's, it's neat how they do it. But you know the exact displacement, so you know the exact volume of whatever, and this will measure things other than water. It'll measure cubic meters of any liquid you pump through it. Put all the dust in the table. So you know that. And as that moves around, it moves this wheel right here. That little wheel turns around, and that little wheel is our magnet wheel. You can see the magnet on the other side. So that turns the magnet. So the water moving through moves this, which moves this, and this is just a simple axle assembly, and moves the magnet. Okay, So this handles the whole puzzle of how do you have a measured amount of a liquid flowing through here, and you can know how much that is, and you can make that actuate something. So this measures it down here, and this goes around and around. So we've got that. Now we have to figure out how to open this, and that's not going to be easy because they really don't want it to be easy. They, because if it was, people would hack their water meters. And it's a lot easier to mess with a water meter, which is locked down in somebody's basement, than it is your electric meter, which is out on the side of the house and actually gets seen by a, an inspector type person every month or so, this is a lot harder to see. 
So it's going to have a lot better security to keep people out of it. So we're going to have to work for it. This is my first water meter I've ever opened. So I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing and I'm making this up as I go along. So if you're looking for elite hacker tips on how to violate your water meter, this probably isn't the video to watch. But I think I've got it. I think I take that screw out and the whole cap will slip right off the top. So there's our set screw. Now we'll take this off. Or does it unscrew? Oh, okay. Cool. Now, here's the top, all shiny and pretty and clean. It looks like brass. Now, this right here is going to be really thin, and it's got a little thin film of oil on it, which is kind of weird because nothing here moves. But our magnet sits below right there, and our meter sits on top. If I turn, ah, look, if I turn the magnet, you see the little, little triangle piece moves, okay? And you can see that's, that's solid brass. There's nothing, as I turn it now, you can't see anything move. So it's just a magnet. So if I take that piece completely out of the equation and I touch the magnet on the bottom here and I turn the magnet, you'll see the, the little triangle move. So the triangle is basically, I, I understand why the triangle's there now. Because what the triangle's doing is saying that the internal assembly, this part, is working. Because there's a lot of things there. That, that, if that gets oxidized or anything too bad, I can see that being the failure point, because this is where all the moving parts are. It doesn't help us get into here, though, and it's probably glued shut. So we're going to have to get a little violent. I'm good with that. Let me look and see if there's an easier way before I go smashing things. Here's our electrical connections for reading it up on top. Because when they read the water meter of this type, since the meter has to be down in the basement because it has to be in line with the cold water line, oh, that's not gonna work. Um, they put a remote read head on it. Is that skinny enough? Yes, they put a remote read head on it which mounts on the outside of your house, and it looks like, it's shaped almost exactly like that, and it's black. And you'll see it on the outside of your house. It's time for safety glasses and a hammer. All right, so we chiseled our way all the way around and got nothing for all of that effort, really, except a really chewed up box. But it looks pretty cool there, all chewed up like that. So we're bringing out the power tools. This is my Dremel 3000. It's a stock tool here at the Geek Group, thanks to the help of Batman. So I'm going to carve my way around. now. This is an important thing for anybody using a Dremel with a cutoff wheel. This is a really good fiber reinforced cutoff wheel on here. It's one of the nice ones with the, the quick connect thing. But there's a special term for people who use Dremels without wearing proper eye protection. And I don't care what you have in the end of this. These things spin at 12 to 15 and up 1,000 RPM. There's a special term for people that use a Dremel without eye protection. The word is blind. So if you're going to be using a Dremel, Eye protection is mandatory. I put mine on the minute I got out the hammer. So, yeah. Well, I need a little more oomph than that.
See, the nice thing is it's melting its way through the plastic, as you can see there. And as the little plastic bits melt, it's flinging them into my forehead. It's really fun. It's just little tiny rockets of melting plastic. It's art. Somebody's got to suffer. Now we just slide this right out of here. And we'll clip the little wires. We don't need those. Okay, so here's our meter. We've got our little triangle on top. I still can't see to the bottom, and that's that's really what I'm quite curious about. I wonder if there's a way to lift the whole unit out of this because I'd like to show the whole thing. Oh, well, hey, that, that was great. All right, now we've got our magnet here and we've got our magnet here. And if I bring them together, yeah. Okay, so as we turn this, try and get it so you can see. If I turn, you, you can see how they bind together. And it turns the clockwork bits inside. If you have a water meter like this in your basement, you can listen to it. Like, have somebody go upstairs and flush the toilet or something, and you'll hear the water meter as it, as it processes stuff. So let's look in here, and we can see there's all the little gears. And it's, it's a decade counter. But this one is a different type of counter. And let's dig into it. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Oh, I got an idea. I got an idea. This could be neat. Watch this. No, I might be able to do it right with that on there. All right. Safety third. OK, now I'm going to put this big Dremel wheel on the side of the magnet. And I'm not going to try and cut because the, the magnet, yeah, that's, that's kind of rubbery here. The magnet's down in the middle. So what I'm going to do is try and turn this by holding it on the edge like that. And if I do that, you should see this turn really fast. Let's, let me see if I can make it work. Now it works out for fast. Let's try it a notch faster. And how did Bowden cut his thumb off? I was excited about the water meter. Now I don't know if we can see it. Do we have? Yeah, there's a tenth place. I gotta look at it in the camera. I can't I can't see it myself. But there's a tense place in there. Now this is way, way, way faster than this meter was designed to spin. 
while we're pushing our luck, let's just see how far we can push it. Let's see how fast we can make an electric meter spin. Okay, I'm going to put that on there like that. And I'm just going to tighten this down nice and snug. Just, just finger tight. Now I have asked Batman to get me some electrical tape. And I'm going to electrical tape this to here to give me a really simple, low budget, like a, a fluid coupling, like a, a bendable, flexible, mechanical coupling. So the other way I could do that might be to crimp right down on this bar. Now my problem here is this little piece, this is the main drive line here. And I don't know if you can see it in there, but you can see the, the little blue plastic, that's the main drive. Now that's really bendy. It is not designed to have, the, the only mechanical force it's ever designed to have is the weight of the magnet assembly on the bottom. And I'm about to hang a Dremel on there and there's no way I'm gonna hold it perfect, so it's gonna flex around and stuff. And just The torque of putting the tape on against it is more force than it was ever designed to handle, ever. So it's probably going to break. It's probably going to break and there will be bleeding and fire and pain, but that'll make great video. So we're gonna do this anyway, because why not? All right, so I've got the Dremel tool on there, but in doing it like this, it's gonna be backwards because the way we were doing it to spin the meter before, we had the cutoff wheel against the magnet and it was counter rotating. So here's my theory. I could be totally wrong in this. I don't know if this will work, but I think it will. The Dremel has a brush type motor. I know if I plug it into the wall that the Dremel spins the wrong way for what I'm doing. But I have a big power supply right here. Now on my power supply, I've got black and white. Now I'm guessing black is hot and white is neutral. It usually is. So that on that end is um, red is the black side. So here's my red with my black wire. Now in America, hot on your outlet is the small plug. So that would be the black and that would make it spin backwards from what I want. So I'm gonna put it on the big plug, which should be neutral. And basically I'm hooking my Dremel up backwards. And if this works, the Dremel might even spin backwards, which is what I'm trying to do. Now this won't work with a lot of electric motors, but because of the, the type of motor in a Dremel, the way it's built, I think it will. So I'm going to turn the Dremel on. Now this could either work great or it could burn up my Dremel. I don't really know which, but it's science, man. You got to take a chance. So let's see if it spins the right way. or if it doesn't work at all. Let's turn that all the way up. All right, is it spinning the right way? Is the meter climbing? No, it's going backwards, isn't it? All right, well, spin it around then. Run it the other way. Ah, stop that. All right. The meter's going down. Okay, reverse them back this way. It's still spinning the wrong way. No matter what I do, it's spinning backwards. All right, I can't control it, but this does at least let me be able to have hands-off control of the Dremel, and I can set this here where you can see it, and we'll just spin this up until something gives, because at some point something's got to give. And I've got a little bit of a rubbery mat here that I can put this on to protect it, and let's just spin it up and see what happens. it will spin the little knob right out the bottom of the meter. There we go. Okay, so that's that. <laughs> that was kind of fun. 
Now let's take a look inside the meter and see what we get. It's going to start, as these things always do, with popping off the little knobs for the reader, the actual needles for the display. So we'll pop that off. We'll pop off our little triangle. Then we can take the plate off. So there's the meter, which is just a simple plastic enclosure. Snap together tabs. So we'll pop the tabs. There you go. So here's inside there. Now we've got a worm drive. Cool thing is there's a circuit card in there. And that's going to be what drives our thing. Okay, so you can see there's two circuit cards right here. And we've got our number wheels, that's the tenth spot. Let's dig in a bit. There's some gears down on the bottom that you can kind of make out. A green one and a black one. And this is going to be our main gear drive housing here, so we'll pop this open. I'm just going to break the tabs right off. It's easier that way. It's not like this is ever going to go back together. So there's our gears, and it's all just reduction gears. And these reduce down the drive for the worm drive. Oh, that's all one piece. Okay, let me see if I can get this out intact. I don't know if I can, but I'm going to try. Come on. Ah, oh, yeah, cool. Okay, now here's how this works. Every time, this has a little wiper on it. Every time it goes around, it catches that and it moves it over one spot, which is a pretty simple thing to do. This, it's going to be really hard to see, but maybe our overhead can zoom in enough to show you. Okay, look right there. See how there's these little gears, this little row of gears on the bottom? As this comes around, right on top you can see those, there's two teeth on the inside gear. So as that comes around, that turns that gear just a little bit. So that goes around. And you'll notice if you turn this backwards, this disengages. So it won't, it won't spin it backwards very well. As that comes around again, it moves that gear forward again. Now on the other side of the first white gear, right next between the four and the five, it's got two teeth of a gear on the one side. So as that comes around, watch on the next one. Boop! The whole thing moves over one. So if we just grab this one and turn it, oh, it won't let me. Okay. But as we come around between the four and the five again, you see that just lines up and it turns the whole thing over one. So, yeah, that's how it works. And it just occurred to me that we're actually incrementing this backwards. So, <laughs> so these go around, and that's how it keeps track of what's what. Now, there's the circuit boards, and I want to see how those are getting their information. Because what they do with it is interesting, but I want to see how they get it in the first place. So, let's pull this apart, and I think if we just pull, this will all slide apart. Yeah. Per ah! Aha! Okay. Okay. I've got it. Now, this sits. Okay, so it can't measure all the wheels, but the four wheels, all right. Look at this. 
there's four wheels that sit next to a circuit card, right? This wheel and this wheel touch this card. This wheel and this wheel touch this card. The tense is ignored, and the big wheel out here with the red numbers, that's ignored too, okay? There's no electrical connections on it. It's just a little plastic wheel, okay? But this wheel next to the circuit card has two little sets of wipers, and if you zoom in really, really close, you can see them. Take a look at the little wipers. See those? The little, the little gold fingers? Well, those little gold fingers travel around this path over here. We'll slide it down a bit so we'll let it move. If it went on there, it'll come off of there. Okay. There's this path right here. And as this moves around the path, the two gold wipers are connecting the inside circle to the outside circle. So by knowing which path it's on, that's the area that represents a given numeral on the thing. So it's counting as it goes around. This is a counter. We'll take the rest apart. You can see there's a counter there. Same thing, inner circle, outer circle. And then on this one, inner circle, outer circle, inner circle, outer circle. They're all the same. It's just a counter. And it's feeding, that, that's where it's getting the raw data. And it feeds that raw data into a simple circuit. We've got, it's all surface mount technology. And there's a lot of pins on the bottom of that that feed into that chip right there. And there's your chip. You can see the numbers. And you can look that up on findchips.com. And that's how your water meter works. So it's all done in there, and then it sends that data out here, which is probably some manner of really simple serial connection. So when the guy comes up with the reader, there's a little RF connection or an inductive connection, and it calls the meter and says, what number do you have? And the meter responds and sends it out to the meter reader guy. So that's how it works. It all boils down to little wipers on circles that are controlled through a magnetic coupling, through a gear drive which is controlled from a rotary piston type setup. So yeah, that's kind of cool. I actually learned a lot in it. I had no idea that there was all that involved. This is way better than, than the electric meter. This is cool. We could really dig into this. The next one I want to do is a gas meter, but I got to get one. We don't actually have one in stock. I'm going to see if I can scrounge one up, and if I can, that'll be a video coming up soon. So I want to thank you guys for watching and exploring with me. Thank you for hanging out and being curious because that's what I do. So you guys have fun. If you want to learn more about the Geek Group and what we do here and be a part of the largest hacker space in the world, go to thegeekgroup.org where you can be a member and sign up and get involved and watch these videos live as they happen and have all kinds of fun. So I'll see you guys next time. I'm Chris Bowden. And you're not. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.